Hi there, and welcome back. This is Jennifer McGuire. So I shot this video a few weeks ago, but I'm finally just now getting around to doing the voiceover. I've been getting a lot of emails and questions about this particular product, so I wanted to be sure to share some ideas. This video is about Distress Resist Spray. Now, I'm a big fan of Distress products. I always have been. I feel like there are so many creative things you can do with them, and this Resist Spray is no different. There are so many fun techniques, and I'm going to share several of them today. So the Distress Resist Spray is unlike any product that I've ever used. It's very unique and hard to describe, but I'll share the properties so you can get a better understanding of how to use it. So this is what I like to consider like a textured coating that you can put on your projects. It sprays like a sprayable glue, but it's different because it doesn't dry tacky. Now it seals the surface below and is waterproof and leaves fun kind of bumpy texture that's really unique. Now an important thing to note about this product is that it will stick to just about any surface, pretty much every surface. That means it will get anywhere you don't want it if you're not careful. So all I do to take care of that is I use a deep box and I put my paper in there and I spray in that box, just like I often do with other sprays and mists. So be careful to only get this product where you want it. In my case, I only went out of my cardstock, so I'm putting my cardstock into this box and I'll spray inside of it. Now you can press the bottle to get a nice mist on your project, or you can take the top off and tap it so that you get bigger drops onto your paper. But you do want to always keep this closed and wipe the nozzle off after you use it every time so that it doesn't get clogged. I just used a baby wipe each time to wipe the nozzle off and I never had a problem with it clogging. This product will go on white, but it dries clear. So if you were to put this on colored cardstock, you would see it at first, but it always does dry clear. So Tim had mentioned, don't use this on any product that you don't want it to stay on, including stamps. Don't try stamping with this. It will just ruin your stamps. So instead, I'll show you a bunch of other techniques that you can do with this product, and they are really fun. The first thing I wanted to show you is how to create a layered colored background. And I'm going to actually do a galaxy night sky. This is definitely my favorite thing to do. So on this white cardstock, I put the, that mist and those drops of the distress resist spray. This was the one that was just in the box and I let it dry and it dries very, very quickly. On top of that, I'm a very quickly applying different colors of distress ink. You can see I'm not putting in any effort to blend. I'm just putting color down in different areas on the paper. I'm putting it back in my box and putting on a few more spritzes and drops of the Distress Resist Spray. And then I'll let that dry and I'll apply some more color. And what happens is each time I add the Distress Resist Spray, it traps the color underneath it. So the first time it traps some white, this time it's trapping some of that gold wild honey color. Now I'm gonna put more Distress Resist Spray on top and that'll trap some of the peacock feathers that I put on top. So I end up with different colors of droplets because I'm layering this all together. And since it doesn't take long for this product to dry, it really doesn't take long to do this technique. So you can see it looks like a hot mess at this point, lots of different colors. I do wipe off the excess ink from on top of the Distress Resist Spray each time just to keep it clean looking. Now that I've covered the whole surface with different bright colors and lots of dots of the Resist Spray, I'll let that dry and now I'm coming in with the Distress Ink Black Soot. This is a dark black ink and I'm just going over it lightly in different areas and then polishing it with my dry cloth here. And you can see all the different colors of splotches and specks and mist that we have in the background. And it's a beautiful galaxy sky. Now you could create other types of looks with this. I just thought the galaxy was fun to create. You could do beautiful water scenes or even just a beautiful colorful background with it. To create a cre quick card from this, I'm using a My Favorite Things Shooting Star die. I stacked a few of them together and I'm just gluing them directly onto my background. And then I have a glitter star to put in the center. I trimmed my panel down and put it onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card. And here I'm adding a Simon Says Stamp Missing You die. 
I die cut this from white cardstock and stacked a few together for some added dimension. Very simple card. You could add some gems or sequins if you want to, but I felt like I didn't need to since there were so many colors going on in the background. A lot of interest there. The Distressed Resist Spray does dry with a shine and a bit of texture, so you can see that when you tilt it in the light. Next, I wanted to show you another example of a background created with this technique. This is also a galaxy sky, but I simplified it a bit. I started with white cardstock and I added some Distress Resist Spray. I let it dry and then I applied a bunch of colors at once. That's what you see here. Then I applied some more Distress Resist Spray on top of that. So we've trapped white under some of the droplets and colors under some of the others. Then I went and added more color on top of that. I did some chip sapphire and some black soot. You can really put the color down heavily if you want to. And you can see all those little droplets of trapped color that have some nice shine and a little bit of texture to it. Now I wanted to keep this card very simple and keep the focus on this beautiful die that I used here from Tim Holtz. This is the mini globe die, I just love it. Now I die cut the globe die and stamped the sentiment from a Hero Arts stamp set across it. Then I stacked a few more additional die cuts behind it and added it onto my card. That way you get a fun stacked look with the sentiment stretched across it. And this is where that Hero Arts sentiment is from. This is a set I've used often in videos and I thought that you make this world beautiful was perfect for the globe. Okay, my next technique idea is to create a spotlight on your card using Distress Resist Spray. I'll be honest that I don't love the card that I created here. However, I love the technique, so I wanted to share it with you. In this case, I'm using Distress Watercolor Paper. Any watercolor paper will work. I'm holding the bottle close to the paper and spraying heavily in one area. So I'm ending up with a very thick layer of Distress Resist Spray in one spot that's towards the bottom right of my paper. You'll see that it's a nice even sheen over it. I set it aside and it dried very quickly. Now it's time to apply some color over this. I'm using Peacock Feathers Distress Ink in some water to create kind of a watercolor look. However, over this you could apply Distress Inks or Dye Inks with an ink blending tool. You could do any watercolors, whatever kind of color you want to apply on top of this. And what happens is the area that I sprayed that Distress Resist Spray will resist this color and leave that bright white spot. And remember, it's shiny with beautiful texture to it also. So I started with white watercolor paper. So the protected area is white. You could start with pattern paper and spray the Distressed Resist ink on it and trap that pattern behind it and do whatever you want on top of it. So this is a great way to keep kind of a spotlight on an area on your background. Just be sure to wipe off any excess ink from that area with a dry cloth. Now here is my completed card. You can see that spotlight area behind the fish is shiny and has a little bit of texture. And I like that little bit of mist look that it has going around the edge of it. So this card is very simple. I just added a fun fish die cut from Poppy Stamps. I layered the die cut together out of two colors of orange cardstock. And then I added Tonic Nouveau Shimmer Pen to it, so it would be shimmery. I added a little black drop for the eye, and then a Keep Swimming sentiment from a Waffle Flower stamp set. Finally, for little bubbles in the background, I just put down drops of Tonic Crystal Glaze, and then sprinkled on some glitter, just some Prisma Glitter, for a bit of shine. But I really do like this spotlight technique with the Distress Resist Spray, and I hope to use it again. Okay, my next technique idea for Distressed Resist Spray is to use your dyes to create masks or stencils for the spray. If you look in the background of this card here, you'll see that the light colored area has some texture and shine to it. That's the Resist Spray. So you could use any dyes that you may have to create a mask or your own stencil, but I decided to use background dyes today. I'm using the Birch Press Waves Layered Die Set these are three full-size dies that you can die cut and then layer together. But I'm actually going to only use two layers for today's card. But again, you could use any shape that you want to die cut. 
I'm starting by die cutting one of these backgrounds from some scrap cardstock. So basically I'm considering this die cut a stencil for this project. I have a four and a quarter by five and a half inch pool note card that I've created. And I'm taping my stencil onto the front of the note card with just some temporary tape. I'm putting this into my box and then I will spray this very generously with the Distress Resist Spray. I want to put a lot on here so that it's nice and solid, has lots of shine, and even has a bit of texture. After I've sprayed to completely cover the area, I'm going to carefully remove my die cut. Now, I wasn't very careful. You'll see I actually drop it here and it wants to stick because remember I said it's sticky when it's wet. So I wasn't able to reuse it, but if you were more careful than me, you could reuse it for another project. Okay, so I let that dry. You can see the texture and the shine. And over this, I am ap applying some Mermaid Lagoon Distress Ink with an ink blending tool. You can see that the areas where I put the Distress Resist Spray are resisting the ink that we're putting on top and allowing the color of the note card to show through. So now I'm going to take another layer of those background dies that I showed you. I die cut it from white cardstock and I'm just gluing it on top just to add a little more interest to it. While that dries, I wanted to show you the stamp sets that I'm using on this card. This one is the Birch Press Let Your Dreams Sales stamp set. The sentiments are really fun and are great for an ocean lover like me. I used the sailboat from that set. And from this Birch Press Light Your, Let Your Light Shine stamp set, I used a few of the clouds. However, I really like that message that says, let your light shine. And then from the Memory Box Whale Hello There stamp set, I used the See You Soon sentiment. I make a lot of ocean themed cards, so those fun ocean sentiments are ones that I reach for a lot. So I stamped, die cut, and colored the sailboat and some clouds and I'm gluing them onto my background with some foam adhesive. I also white heat embossed the See You Soon sentiment onto a black cardstock strip, and I'll add that to the card also. So there's a lot going on in that background thanks to the technique that we did. So I can keep the rest of this card very simple. So when you take a closer look at this, where that light pool is showing through, you can see the shine and the texture that the Distress Resist Spray offered. So you can look at any of your die cuts and think about what stencils or masks that you can create to create fun backgrounds for your cards also. Okay, I wanted to share another example since not everybody has background dies. I wanted to prove that you could do this technique with other shapes. For this card, I used alphabet letters. These are from Altenew. I'm placing the letters for hugs onto a piece of white cardstock and taping them in place. And then I'll run it through my die cut machine. This creates a stencil, basically, with the word hugs on it. I'm positioning it into my spray box here over a piece of white cardstock. So I'm using that hugs piece as a stencil. I'm generously spraying the Distress Resist spray over it. And then I will remove that stencil and I can save that for another project. It will have that fun re Distress Resist spray on it, so it'll be fun to use. I'm also just going to spray a little bit more Distress Resist Spray on that to have little specks of white in the background. Now once that dried, I'm applying some Distress Ink and a rainbow of colors over the letters. You'll see that the Distress Resist Spray area resists the color beautifully and allows the white cardstock to show through. Once I applied all of the ink, I buffed it with a dry cloth and then I trimmed it down and added it to a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card. I added lots of colorful gemstones to the background. And here you can see the shiny texture that you get with that Distress Resist Spray for those letters hugs. I added a sentiment that says, to you from me with love from this Altenew cross stitch flower stamp set. Okay, this brings us to our next technique, and this goes back to the idea of kind of trapping something behind the Distress Resist Spray. And in this case, I'm going to trap a pattern behind the Resist Spray instead of just plain cardstock. So here's white cardstock, and I'm stamping a typewriter background stamp on it with a soft pool Hero Arts ink. Now this could be a patterned paper, this could be some fancy background stamp or repeated stamping, anything you want you can do for this. I just thought this textbook stamp would be perfect for a fun background. 
Next, I'm going to create a stencil using this lovely Simon Says Stamp die. It's a nice window die, so I'm cutting it from a piece of white cardstock, and I'll be able to save this stencil that I'm making for another project. I'll run it through my die cut machine, and there we have two pieces that we can use for cards. Now for this particular card, I'm going to use the negative space as a stencil. So I'm holding it over my stamped background. And I'm centering it by just making sure that my stamped piece is centered on the back of my stencil that I created, since the stencil is slightly bigger. Now I'm going to put this into the spray box because we don't want that dis distress resist spray. I'm telling you, my tongue is twisted, to end up everywhere on our desk. And I'm very generously spraying this into the center of that open area. You'll see that I'm kind of making sure I'm getting it from all angles so I can be sure to have good coverage. Now I'm going to remove that stencil we made and set it aside for another project. Now once this stamped piece is dry, it's time to add some color over this. I'm using my Peacock Feathers Distress Ink once again with my ink blending tool. And what's cool about the Distress Ink over the Hero Art Shadow Ink is it kind of allows that soft shadow ink to show through. It kind of is resisted a bit, it's really cool. And then that area in the center where we did the Distress Resist Spray, that completely resists the color we put on top and allows that typewriter stamping in the background to show through. I added a Simon Says Stamp Big Thanks die cut to the center and also some pearls around it. Now you could get a similar look by using clear embossing powder instead of the Distress Resist Spray, but this gives a little more shine and a lot more texture. Okay, so speaking of adding shine and texture, you can use the Distress Resist Spray simply for that. I had those white hugs die cuts left over from the stencil that we created earlier, so I thought I'd put them to use. However, I wanted them to have some color, so I just quickly applied color with Distress Inks and my ink blending tool. You could start with colored cardstock scraps, any die cut pieces, whatever you want. Once you have the pieces ready, you just put them into your spray box and spray a generous coat of the Distress Resist Spray on top. And I even put bigger droplets of the Resist Spray by just squeezing down halfway with the nozzle. When it dries, look at the beautiful shine and texture that I end up with on those letter die cuts. It makes them look like embellishments instead of paper die cuts. I added a strip of black and white striped paper and a strip of glitter cardstock behind it. And if you look at the background, my white note card, I used a Hero Arts die to make an impression. So I put the die onto my note card, ran it through my die cut machine with an embossing mat, and impressed that into the background just for a little bit of added interest. Very simple technique of using the Distress Resist Spray for some shine and some texture. Here's another example using that same technique but this time along the entire background of a card. Remember those Birch Press layering wave dies that I showed you earlier? Well, I really wanted to use them again because I like them so much. So I layered them on the front of a white note card. And then once they were layered together, I covered the whole card with a bunch of the Distress Resist Spray. That way the whole card has shine and check out that texture. It really adds to the ocean feel. Now the rest of this card is pretty simple. I stamped some cute little fish and colored them quickly with Copic markers and cut them out and added them to the card with foam adhesive. I also added a quick stamp sentiment and some clear gemstones for bubbles. But really I think the background is the star of this card because of that Distress Resist Spray over the layered die cuts. You can spray this over any die cuts, over any textured background. It's a really great way to give it a new look. And by the way, these stamped images are from the Memory Box Fish Tail Stamp Set. Lots of cute images and playful sentiments in that one. Okay, the next technique is to use your Distress Resist Spray along with heat embossing, and this is really fun. This time I'm using a stencil from Gina K. It's a beautiful stencil, but remember how I said that Distress Resist Spray sticks to anything? We don't want it to stick to our stencil. So I actually learned this one from Tim Holtz. I'm glad he tried it out so I didn't have to test. But if you clean your stencil right away by dunking it into water, you'll be fine. So here I have white cardstock in my spray box, have my stencil on top of it, and I'm spraying it with the Distress Resist Spray. 
then I will immediately dunk my stencil into water and you'll see the cloud of the distress resist spray coming off of the stencil into the water. So my stencil turns out just fine. Now I'm going to very quickly add the Wow Gold Sparkle Embossing Powder to the resist spray. The reason you want to move quickly here is distress resist spray dries very quickly. And we want it to hold on to the embossing powder. Now since the resist spray has a different texture to it, your embossing will have a different texture to it than if you say used a Versamark ink pad to hold the powder down. So as I heat set this, you'll see the fun texture and the shine from that embossing powder. Next, I wanted to add color over this very quickly. So I put it back into my spray box and I sprayed it with a few colors of Tim Holtz Distress Spray. This product has been around for a while and I rarely use it and I'm not sure why, but it's basically distress in a spray form and it's so much fun to use. I sprayed a few colors onto it took it out of the spray box, and then wiped any of the color away from the embossed areas. And this way I get a very quick resist background with beautiful color. I had forgotten about how much fun those distress sprays are to use and how fast they are to use, but I saw a video where Tim Holtz was demoing them and I just had to break them out. Here you can see the completed card with the color in the background and that gold embossing with lots of texture and shine. And then the Simon Says Stamp Thanks die cut that I added to it along with some pearls. So you can use your Distress Resist Spray for heat embossing techniques also. So there you have a bunch of ways to use the Distress Resist Spray. I hope this answers some of your questions about this product. If you are interested in the supplies that I use, they're linked below in my YouTube description. But over on my blog, I have much more information for you. In the middle here are a couple other videos that you might find interesting. I appreciate you spending time with me today and I hope you'll be back soon. Have a great day.